Hi, I'm Jeremy Pearsons. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. This week, my grandmother, Gloria Copeland, and her guest, Billy Brim, are going to continue their study on the glory of God. Now, the emphasis this week is on how to walk in the glory in your own life. You know, when you were born again, it was the glory of God that made you a new creation in Christ Jesus. And now it's Christ in you that is the hope of glory. And this is the key to success on every level. And when we stay in the word of God, we keep growing. We are continually changed from glory to glory. So right now, I want you to get your Bible and let's join Gloria Copeland for today's Bible lesson. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast. Billy's back today with some more interesting, wonderful news about the day we live in and how to live it. Hallelujah. So don't miss any of the broadcasts. Billy, welcome. Thank you very much, Gloria. And our subject is the Glorious Church. The Glorious Church. And our, our uh, key scripture is in the book of Ephesians 5, verse 25. Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her yes. with the washing of water by the word that he might present her Hallelujah. to himself Thank a Lord. glorious church. Oh, yes, Lord. That's what we Not want. Not a church that's a hiding, in a hiding in a cave somewhere, barely making it, you know, like a little worm. No. No, no. He's the most glorious bridegroom ever there was, and he's coming for a glorious bride. Amen. That Hallelujah. he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. For we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Praise God. And so that's what we're talking about. We've been talking about the glory of God. We've traced the glory of God all down through the Bible, really. And we'll be doing it. You should listen more. You can go on Roku. You can go on um, uh, kcm.org. Yes. And you can find these and catch up to where we are because we're really quite a ways along in our study. I'm going to uh, give you a word that came a year ago, exactly in uh, October. And it came through me. Um, you have come to the time now for the lightning and the glory yes. of the unseen to be manifest to Praise you. God. That means you can see it. You have come to the time when we the things of it. earth are growing dimmer. Earth's magnetism will soon release you. The gravitational hold will be taken away. But until that day, degree by degree, mm. step by step, Praise God. more and more the glory yes, will shine Lord. through you. Yes, Lord. And that's what we're going to talk about today, degrees of glory, degrees. the measure of glory, how it, it moves by degree from glory to glory, like yes. the Bible says. Yeah. Your eyes will see even more than you've seen before, and that more, more, more that you cry for will come unto you. Things you grasp, you'll let go of. Grudges you've held will hold you no more. Fires of lust freedom. will hold you no freedom. more. Freedom. freedom will ring within your soul, even as now it does in your spirit. Praise See, your spirit, God. your spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. Your spirit's free. But those, uh, that enemy will try it through your mind, your emotions. Sidetrack you. He'll try, and he'll try to hold you still captive. So I'm going to read that line again. Freedom will ring within your soul, even as now it does in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Free, free, free Praise shall God. my bride yes. be. Yes, oh yes, Lord. And Lord. the manifestation of me shall show up on your face. Hallelujah. And the glory and the grace in every place you go. Amen. And we're going to manifest the glory, Gloria, before we go. Praise God. Uh, I've heard Brother Hagin prophesy that so many times that um, our faces will shine with the glory of God. Because he's in us. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Son. Uh, yes. And then he, as he grows degree by degree by degree by degree and takes over your outer man, then the world will see the manifestation of the sons of God. Praise Back God. to the word. Yes, that's right. The time has come and that you know, but this isn't the whole of it. This isn't the all. Mm. You really are barely beginning. Praise God. But steps 
and degrees will increase quickly. Quickly, I like quickly, glory to God. And the master will become everything yes, to you. you. That's an awesome word, isn't it? The master will become everything to you. It's like that old song, Gloria. The things of earth grow will grow strangely dim. dim yes. In the light of the his glory and grace. Everything to you. That's a good word for us. You know? Oh. And, and we're the bride. Yeah. And a bride that's really in love with her husband. She just can't wait till that wedding day. Her thoughts are all on it. Preparation. Even in the Word of God, it says, and the bride hath made herself ready. Yes, that's right. So that's why we're giving ourselves to what the hope, what the Word says about the glory. Because it's supposed to be a glorious church. Glorious church. So we're looking that's at what the Word says. Going. You always, about anything in life, you should think, what does the Word say on that? That's right. Yep. You shouldn't think, oh, brother and so-and-so, he's bad, mean, and so da 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 You don't supposed to look at brother so-and-so. You're supposed to look, what does the Word say? That's right. Amen. Let's say, let's say brother so-and-so, this preacher died young. Well, I don't know about divine healing. That preacher, really good, nice, sweet brother, he died young. You don't ever look at other people no. to find out anything. You don't stop going to church because of other people. You think first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Uh, pay attention to my word. Yes, that's right. And what it says. So we're looking at what God's word says about the glory. If we're going to be the glorious church, yep. we're going to be manifesting God's mm. glory. What is God's glory? Well, it's the presence of God. Of himself. It's himself. It's the presence of God manifested yes. so you could see it. In the Old Testament, we went over it last week. It would be like a smoke, like a fire, like a cloud. But you can see it. And Moses' face shone yes, it did. with it. And so the Bible says ours will too. Praise Bless God. Hallelujah. So we're going to look at what the Word says about the glory of God in a believer, in a new creation. There are three groups of people in the earth, the Jews, the nations, and the church. And um, we're in the third group. And it says about that third group, it tells us things. Now, here, here's the Jews and the Gentiles in the Old Testament. Now, here comes Jesus. He, showed, he dies on the cross. He sheds his blood. And now, any person, any Jew, any Gentile, you, you only have to believe one thing, that God raised Jesus from the dead. Mm -hmm. You don't have to believe in divine healing, tongues, nothing. You just have to believe Jesus died for your sins and God raised him. And then if you confess I believe him, it. Yes, ma'am. And, and if you believe it in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you say it with your mouth, you're born again. Confession is made unto salvation. Yes. Conf that's exactly Hallelujah. right, Gloria. Confession Glory is made unto salvation. Oh, yes. So you did it. I remember. Oh, what did you say it. to him now? Oh, well, I didn't know exactly what I was supposed to say, but <laughs> here's what I said. I said, take my life and do something with it, Lord. I never dreamed this would be it, but that's no, what I said. you become shy in a way. And I'm, oh yeah, and I'm so glad I did. And you're so Holy glad you did. God. I said, and you you said, be my Lord. Yeah. You said, do something with me. Yeah. I give my life to you that's right. to do something with. That's right. And He knows what to do with so every grateful. life. So when you do that, He's got a plan for it. He does, and it says in Second Corinthians five seventeen. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Mm -hmm. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And 1 Thessalonians tells us you are a spirit. Yeah. You have a soul, mind, will, and emotions, and you live in a body, but you are a spirit. The Bible talks about the inner man and the outward man. And when you're born again in that inner man, everything becomes new. Yeah. The minute. Yeah. The Holy Ghost kills you, really. Kills that old man. He's gone. Replaces him. And you get <laughs> the life of God, the seed of God. You're a born. A new creation, the A Bible new says. creation right here. And some uh, translation said a new species, something that never, ever was before. I, I don't like people. I used to be a Gentile, but I'm not anymore. I was in a church service once, and the pastor said, everybody who's Gentiles, raise your hand. I didn't raise my hand. I sit on them. He kept saying, if you're a Gentile, raise your hand. I'm not one. I wouldn't do it. 
I can't go against you a don't word. Want to lie in church. I don't want to lie in church. <laughs> no. I used to be one, but I ain't no more. That's right. I'm in that third group. I'm a brand new creation. Oh, man. Now we're going to look at what happens to you as a brand new creation, and we're going to look at 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 3. And I did print it out over here, Gloria, but I'm going to look kind of back and forth between my okay. Bible and between it because i got notes inside and everything in my Bible. If it. our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Mm -hmm. Now, the New Testament tells us that we're born again by the gospel of grace. God's grace. It's just like a big old ocean favor, up there of just grace. The favor of Goodness. God. But it's got to get to you through faith by grace through faith. Mm -hmm. So you exercise faith in the grace of God. And that's the good news, the gospel of grace. That's right. But Satan, he doesn't want people to know about it. He wants them to think they got to work themselves and religion's no fun and why not just forget it. So he hides it. He has blinding tactics. It says here in verse 3, If our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. So I know you all know people that are not believers. It's hidden to them. They don't see it. They don't even see why you see it. That's right. Why don't they see it? Because the God of this world, Satan, has blinded the minds of them that believe not. Lest something would happen. The mm, light, light of the what? Glorious Glory. gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The gospel full of glory. Exactly. Mm. Exactly, Glow. Hallelujah. What a great name you've got, Gloria. Oh, I like it. Yeah. <laughs> but think about it. If you're going to be a glorious church, it's going to take the gospel of glory to get you into it. That's right. And it's called the gospel of glory. Remember we studied how man fell from the glory? Yeah. But God then has sent the Lord of glory. Oh, we went into this detail last week. You've got to go back and get it. He sent the Lord of glory that we could be lifted back up Praise into the God. presence of his glory. And it wouldn't kill us. It's an awesome plan. It's an awesome plan. Hallelujah. I think this Bible is a story of the glory. Yes, it is. So he's got these people blinded like a hammerlock on them because he doesn't want them to find out they can move into the glory world. That they're world. free from Him. That's yes. Right. He, mm -hmm. he does not want the light of the gospel, the glorious gospel. Now, that's important. God doesn't put extra words in the Bible. Right. It's the glorious gospel of the anointed one who is the image of God. Remember that. Now, He's the image of God, Jesus, mm -hmm. should shine unto them. Praise God. Verse 6. For God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Praise Christ. Praise God. Now, God who, who said, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, that's a reference to Genesis 1, 2. God said to that dark, dank world that it had yeah. become after Satan fell, light be. Yes. And that same God in the dark little spirits that are dead to God, he wants to say, light be and shine unto them and give them the light of the knowledge of the glory of God and the whole great plan of the Praise glory God. of God to give you, to give you right and access back into God's presence. And you'd be a part of the glorious church. Yes, amen. We have this treasure in earthen vessels. It's our choice. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So when you got born again, you got, you got, God starts giving you light on the glory. Right. This is not a side issue in the church. This is not no. a side issue in the Bible. No. That's what it's all it's about. It's what it's all about. It's the story of the glory. So he wants to say when you got born again down there at the altar or wherever you were watching television like, like Jesse was watching Billy Graham, whatever, he said, light be. And suddenly, Jesse, I'm thinking about Jesse this morning, Jesse Duplantis, the light started shining. And what light? On the glory Praise of God. God. Now we've been talking about the mystery of the church 
how it was hidden from ages and generations. Old Testament, no. It, the, the New Testament church is not a fulfillment of prophecy. It was a mystery. It's hidden. Hmm. So now here is succinctly Colossians 1, 26, that mystery. Many places it talks about it in the New Testament in the letters. All the Bible's for the church, but not all the Bible's about the church. The Bible about the church is the New Testament letters. So in the New Testament letters, after Paul got the revelation of the mystery, here it is succinctly. Colossians 1, 26. Even the mystery, which hath been hid from ages and from generations, but now it's made manifest. Paul got this revelation after 17 years of being, we went into that, being aside. God gave him the revelation. Mm -hmm. And here's the mystery. To whom, Colossians 1, 27, God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is, here's the mystery of the church. Yes. Really succinctly. Hallelujah. Christ, Christ in, in you, you, the hope of Think about glory. It. Think about it. Hope Hallelujah. of the manifest presence of God. Mm -hmm. Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's right. Hallelujah. And now we turn back a page and we see how this works. He comes Christ in you. He's your hope of glory and he comes by degree. He, when you're born again, you have all the glory you can tolerate at that moment. Any more might kill your flesh. But you've got a degree of the glory of God in you. Now that is supposed to increase until it takes you over. And we turn back a page in my Bible and we go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and it talks about some people who when they read the Bible, they got a veil on their face. But it says here in the 2 Corinthians chapter um, 3 verse 18, but we all with an open face, we don't have a veil over us. No. After you got born again. We all with an open face beholding as in a glass, that means mirror, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now, we all, see, and what's it talking about? Looking in the Word. Some people have a veil over their heads when they look in the Word. I, everybody Blind, does. Blinded eyes. They, they, they don't have it. They can't mm -hmm. see it clearly. But once you get born again, you don't have that veil anymore. And you look in the Word we all with an open face beholding as is a mirror, the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. When you're born again, you have all the glory you can stand. You look in the Word and you look for the glory of God and the Holy Ghost is working on you and He's changing you from one degree yep. of glory. You can have more and more and more of the presence of God, the power of God manifested in you. But you got to look in the Word. Bless the Lord. Praise God. Here it is in the Amplified. Whenever a person turns in repentance to the Lord, the veil is stripped off and taken away. And all of us with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the Word of God, as in a mirror, the glory of God, are constantly yeah. being transfigured into His very own image in ever-increasing splendor and from one degree of glory Praise to another. God. Hallelujah. For this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. As we continued to behold in the Word of God. In the Word changed. of God. He changes. The Holy Ghost changes yes. you. Yes. It's His so job to change you. If you don't you, continue, you're not you getting changed. Change. It's your job to go in the Word That's and right. look for the glory of God. Praise I, I God. I worked for Kenneth E. Hagin, you know, in 1970. I started working for him. He's a great man of God, man of great faith and great love and great power. Yes, he was. And I was the it editor is. of publications, and he'd be out on a crusade somewhere, and I needed to talk to him about something I'm going to put in the Word of Faith or in a book. So I would say, when Brother Hagin comes home, I need to talk to him. And he'd walk in the office, and I'd get tongue-tied. I hmm. couldn't even say what I needed to ask him about. He didn't help you either. And I, no, he just he stood there. Talk. No, you know, Brother Hagin. <laughs> and so he'd just stand there, you know, and I, I, I was bumfuzzled. I felt like God walked in the room. 
So I would beat myself up. I'd say, Billy Brim, you know that that man is not God. Why are you acting like that? <laughs> so years later, when God could tell me and teach me, he said, this is the plan. You get the glory of God. You look in the word of God. The Holy Ghost changes you. And then the glory increases the glory degree by degree. Yeah. The glory of God is the presence of God manifesting. You grow, you grow up. Uh huh. He said, Brother Hagen and some of the other people have, they have yielded to the plan. And so it is God you sense. It's God in them. Yeah. The glory, the presence of God. No, they're not God, but the presence in God, them, they've li- they're, they're more and more and more to the image of Jesus. They're indwelt by yeah. Him. Yeah. And He's risen degree by degree by degree upon them. Bless the Lord. Yeah. So then later I met other people, the same thing. We grow up. And, and the glory, the presence increases on you. And we don't ever quit growing up. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. we're into the very image of the master. Praise God. Yes. The very image, his very own image, as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are constantly uh, being, trans- they are constantly being transfigured into his very own image. Now, as we spit, we, we, we get born again, we begin to learn what the Bible teaches and obey it and accept it and say it, confess it, we begin to to grow up spiritually. Mm -hmm. And this is what this is talking about. Mm -hmm. We're transformed and we don't ever quit growing. Mm -hmm. No, we may not ever quit growing after we go to heaven. I think you're probably right about that glow. But we know we don't quit growing down here. So Mm -hmm. we stay in the word. We get in a good church or under a good teacher that teaches the word of God, not just ideas, but the word of God. Right. And we're changed. Continually change. Glory to God. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.